Imagine standing in the rugged valleys of the Caucasus 13,000 years ago. A hunter peers out into the snow-dusted peaks, clutching a flint-tipped spear. But when he turns his head toward the firelight, his eyes flash with a startling brilliance. A pair of icy blue irises, almost unnatural in their brightness against his complexion. This man belonged to the Caucasus hunter-gatherers, a little-known people who lived between Europe and the Middle East at the end of the Ice Age. Their DNA, preserved in the bones of the Cotius Kilda and Satsurblia cave individuals in Georgia, has revealed one of the most surprising genetic legacies in prehistory, the spread of blue eyes across Eurasia. The Caucasus hunter-gatherers were not a minor, isolated group, their genetic fingerprints appear in the blood of Indo-European herders, early South Asians, and even in modern Europeans. Through them, the bright blue eyes of a few mountain hunter-gatherers became one of the most recognizable features of humanity today. For decades, archaeologists excavating the caves of Georgia found tools, animal bones, and occasional human remains. But it was not until recently that advances in ancient DNA unlocked their secrets. The most famous finds came from Satserblia Cave, dated to 13,300 years ago, and Cotius Kulde Cave, 9,700 years ago. When scientists sequenced these genomes, they were stunned. The Caucasus hunter-gatherers did not fit neatly into existing categories. They were not Western European hunter-gatherers, nor even closely tied to Eastern European hunter-gatherers. Instead, they represented a deeply divergent branch of humanity a people whose ancestors split from Europeans over 40,000 years ago, but who carried traces of basal Eurasian ancestry, a mysterious lineage thought to have diverged even earlier. Within this unique genetic tapestry lay another surprise, the OCA2 HERC2 mutation, the very gene variant associated with blue eyes. Blue eyes are caused by a single-point mutation in the HERC2 gene, which regulates the OCA2 gene responsible for melanin production in the iris. This mutation reduces melanin, producing irises that range from pale blue to green to grey. Geneticists believe this mutation arose around 42,000 years ago, near the Black Sea or the Caucasus itself. The earliest confirmed carriers of blue eye genes are hunter-gatherers in Italy and the Caucasus nearly 20,000 years ago. Another striking feature of Caucasus hunter-gatherer genomes is their link to the enigmatic Basel Eurasians, a population that split from all other non-Africans before the separation of Europeans, Asians, and even Neanderthal admixed groups. Basal Eurasians may have lived in the Near East during the Ice Age, contributing genes that diluted Neanderthal ancestry and altered pigmentation traits. Caucasus hunter-gatherers carry more Basal Eurasian ancestry than Western hunter-gatherers, which may partly explain why their pigmentation tone genes leaned browner even as they carried the blue eye allele. This unusual blend produced the unique Caucasus hunter-gatherer look of blue eyes and black hair, a striking contrast that survives in reconstructions today. Today, the highest frequencies of blue eyes are found in northern and eastern Europe, regions heavily influenced by the Yamnaya and Corded Ware cultures, which carried Caucasus hunter-gatherer ancestry. The great ice sheets were withdrawing at the end of the last ice age. Scandinavia, carved by glaciers into deep fjords and dotted with islands and lakes, was only beginning to emerge as a habitable land. Forests spread northward, reindeer herds followed the melting tundra, and salmon filled the newly freed rivers. Into this harsh and beautiful world came small bands of people, hunters and fishers, who adapted to every shift of season and landscape. These were the Scandinavian hunter-gatherers, a group unlike any that had come before. They carried within them the legacy of two ancient lineages, the Western hunter-gatherers of Central and Southern Europe and the Eastern hunter-gatherers of the steppe and forest zone. Out of their meeting was born a new people whose faces held the first combination of traits now iconic in Northern Europe, light pigmentation blue eyes and blonde hair. They were not farmers, nor herders, nor builders of monuments. They left behind no stone temples and no great cities. Instead, they lived by the rhythm of sea and forest, moving along the coasts and lakes, following fish runs, hunting elk and reindeer, and making their homes in caves or wooden huts. 
yet their true legacy was carried in their blood. The Scandinavian hunter-gatherers were a fusion people, formed at a crossroads of migration, and their DNA survives in modern populations as one of the deepest ancestral roots of Europe. Around 11,000 years ago, as the last glaciers retreated, Scandinavia became a new frontier. To the west, groups of western hunter-gatherers moved northward from what is now Denmark and northern Germany. They were descendants of the people who had survived the Ice Age in refuges in southern Europe, living by hunting red deer, aurochs and wild boar. To the east, across the vast forests of central Eurasia, eastern hunter-gatherers followed the rivers and tundra toward the north. They were the heirs of Siberian foragers who had weathered the Ice Age on the steppes. When these groups met on the Scandinavian peninsula, they mingled not only in culture but in genes. From this meeting was born the Scandinavian hunter-gatherers. By 9,500 years ago, humans were living across the peninsula, as far north as Norway's rugged coastlines. Archaeological evidence shows that colonization came from both directions, the western route through Denmark and southern Sweden, and the eastern route through Finland and northern Scandinavia. Where these peoples joined, the new Scandinavian hunter-gatherers population emerged, blending traits of both ancestries. The Scandinavian hunter-gatherers did not build megaliths, but they left behind evidence that still allows us to glimpse their lives. In Motala, Sweden, archaeologists discovered one of the most extraordinary mesolithic cemeteries in Europe. Human skulls, some with jawbones missing, were found deliberately placed on stakes in a river. A few of the skulls bore healed injuries, suggesting that violence and survival were common. This was not casual disposal of the dead, but a ritual act, a ceremony that imbued the water with meaning. DNA extracted from these skulls revealed the distinct ancestry of the Scandinavian hunter-gatherers, confirming their place as a fusion of East and West. On the Baltic island of Gotland, the cave site of Stora Fovar revealed skeletal remains buried among bones of seals and fish, along with antler tools shaped into hooks and harpoons. These finds showed that Scandinavian hunter-gatherers' life was deeply tied to the sea, where seal hunting and fishing sustained families through long winters. In Norway, the underwater site of Humavikholmen yielded human skeletons preserved beneath the sea for thousands of years, providing further genetic material that confirmed the mixed origins of the Scandinavian hunter-gatherers. These sites, scattered from the Baltic islands to the Norwegian coast, sketch a portrait of a people who moved seasonally, hunted and fished with skill, and honoured their dead in symbolic ways. The most remarkable discovery about the Scandinavian hunter-gatherers lies in their genetics. Western hunter-gatherers who roamed Spain, France and Central Europe may have carried genes for brown pigmentation and blue eyes. They had striking features with brown pigmentation tones paired with pale irises, a combination almost unknown today. Eastern hunter-gatherers who lived further east across the central Eurasian forests and steppe carried genes for light pigmentation and blonde hair, but their eyes were usually brown. When these populations mixed in Scandinavia, their descendants inherited from both. The blue eyes of the west combined with the pale pigmentation and blonde hair of the east. For the first time in human history, the three traits came together in a single population. The Scandinavian hunter-gatherers became the earliest people known to carry the iconic combination of light pigmentation, blonde hair, and blue eyes. Genetic reconstructions allow us to imagine what these people looked like. Their pigmentation was lighter than that of Western hunter-gatherers, thanks to variants inherited from the East, though not yet as pale as that of modern Northern Europeans. Their eyes were often blue, a legacy of Western ancestry, while some already carried the genetic variant that produces blonde hair. Others likely had darker hair, creating a range of appearances within the same community. The result was a population whose faces combined elements of both ancestry streams and whose features foreshadowed those seen in Scandinavia today. These were the first Europeans to bear what we now consider the classic Northern European phenotype. The Scandinavian hunter-gatherers adapted brilliantly to their environment. Their diet reflected the bounty of land and sea. Coastal groups consumed large amounts of fish, seal meat and shellfish, 
while inland foragers relied on elk, reindeer, and wild boar. Berries and plants were gathered in summer, though hunting and fishing formed the core of their subsistence. Their tools were finely made microlithic blades and points of stone, designed to be set into wooden shafts or used as cutting implements. They fashioned harpoons and fishing hooks from antler and bone, demonstrating advanced knowledge of composite technologies. Their settlements were likely seasonal, composed of hide tents or wooden huts near rivers and coasts, moving with the migration of game and the spawning of fish. The rituals at Motala, with skulls displayed in water, show that their spiritual life was as complex as their survival strategies. Rivers and lakes may have been viewed as sacred, perhaps as gateways to the afterlife or homes of spirits. The careful placement of bones suggests a belief system that gave symbolic meaning to death and memory. Although no myths survive, the archaeology suggests a worldview that blended reverence and practicality. The skulls in Motala may have been part of ceremonies to honor ancestors, warn enemies, or ensure success in hunting and fishing. The use of red ochre in burials hints at symbolic color use, tying the dead to cycles of blood and earth. These traces remind us that hunter-gatherer life was never simply about survival, but about meaning and community. The Scandinavian hunter-gatherers stood at a crossroads in the story of Europe. To their west lived the darker, blue-eyed Western hunter-gatherers. To their east were the lighter, often brown-eyed Eastern hunter-gatherers. To their south, in Anatolia, early farmers were preparing to spread agriculture into Europe. The Scandinavian hunter-gatherers combined the two hunter-gatherer ancestries, but remained distinct from the farmers. They were both a unique people, and a transitional one. They embodied the last great foraging culture of Scandinavia before the arrival of agriculture, but they also carried within their genes the mixture that would later shape European populations when combined with farming and herding societies. Around 6,000 years ago, the wave of Neolithic farmers moved northward into Europe. Carrying crops, livestock and new ways of life, they brought a demographic shift that gradually overwhelmed forager societies. The Scandinavian hunter-gatherers were absorbed into these new populations, their unique genetic profile diluted by farming lineages from Anatolia. A few thousand years later, the Indo-European herders of the Yamnaya swept across Europe from the steppes, carrying with them yet another infusion of ancestry. By the Bronze Age, the distinct Scandinavian hunter-gatherers were gone as a pure population, yet their genes survived, blended into the tapestry of Europe. Northern peoples, especially the Sami of Scandinavia, retain higher amounts of Scandinavian hunter-gatherers' ancestry, while the traits they carried, particularly blonde hair and blue eyes, remain widespread across Northern Europe. The modern people of Scandinavia are not direct descendants of the Scandinavian hunter-gatherers alone, but of a mixture of early farmers, steppe herders and foragers. Yet the Scandinavian hunter-gatherers' contribution is unmistakable. The blonde hair gene, first present in them and their eastern ancestors, spread widely across Europe. The blue eye allele, inherited from the west, endured through millennia of population changes. The pigmentation lightning alleles introduced from the east combined with farming variants from the south to create the pale complexion common today. Through this complex weaving of ancestries, the Scandinavian hunter-gatherers helped lay the foundation for the physical appearance of millions of modern Europeans. Every pair of blue eyes in Scandinavia carries a spark from the Mesolithic fjords. The story of the Scandinavian hunter-gatherers is important not only for their genetic legacy, but for what they teach us about humanity. They demonstrate that mixture, not isolation, was the engine of evolution in Europe. It was the fusion of East and West that created their distinctive appearance. It was their survival in a harsh Northern world that left traces still visible today. They remind us that history is not only written in monuments and cities, but in bones, genes, and the color of a child's hair or eyes.